Hey guys, it's Captain Harris back with a new video for you. We're doing a tier list today, and as it was Steve Harris's birthday yesterday as of recording this video, uh, I thought we would do a little Steve Harris themed video, you know? So I put together a little tier list of uh, most of the songs penned by him. There was a couple albums that had quite a few too, Way many, too many, so I narrowed it down to a maximum of four per album. But and not all the albums have four, so... Yeah, so there are a few with just one, like the reunion era, but yeah. So, sorry if a song you really like didn't make this, but I tried to go with like the most known and popular of his songs to rank. But so, the theme really is Happy Birthday, Steve. Yeah, I got my old Steve Harris shirt on. I retired this because it's all flaking off, but I used to wear this back in high school, so we got the Steve Harris shirt. We got the Steve Harris tier list, and we're going to have some fun today. So I thought we would start, obviously, from the first album, which Ooh. had so many. Like how many? Uh, like five or six. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I kept it to the four, so... First song on the album was a Steve Harris pen song. That is Prowler. Prowler. Okay, so <laughs> uh, with this tier list, we're going tippy top, iconic, all the way down to. Uh. <laughs> so the only one that I feel like isn't going to be completely opinion based for me is iconic because there's just some songs that you can't deny are like. Yeah, like know. I have my idea of what's iconic already, and we'll see if they yeah. clash at all. But we'll see. So Prowler, I feel like it's unfair to give it a lower rating because it is the first song on the debut album but i would still just put it at a, a good i was gonna say great okay i think great and it would be good if it was just uh you know any other song on yeah. that album but just because you know this is a ton of people's first time ever hearing the yeah. band i would say it's a great song i would i would agree with that so i'll we'll go ahead and put prowler in great because it's too hard to not put it you know, in iconic, but it's better than good. What, what other song do we have from this album? Phantom of the Opera. Ooh, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm already somewhere in between iconic and brilliant. Yeah, I am as well. Um, but I'm, I would say brilliant just because it's not a song where you say Iron Maiden and people are like, oh, Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean... Absolutely brilliant song. The fact that that song is on the first album to me is just insane enough because that's, mm -hmm. it holds up well. Like, if they wrote that now, I would say, like, yeah, that sounds... You know, it's timeless. It sounds like it could have been written at any point. So, brilliant I mean, it that is. that has to be, like, first place brilliant. Yeah. I don't know if we're doing the full tier thing. But that's okay. Yeah. In my mind, it's first place. <laughs> there first is place. a lot of songs on here, and this was kind of a last-minute decision, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Transylvania. Um, okay, it's so good. I mean, it's like it's the it's the first instrumental we get from yeah. them. I think it's their best instrumental. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? I think brilliant. Yeah, I was between brilliant and great. I'll go with brilliant. I, it's just it's so good. Shrinking them down a little bit. I had to make them kind of big so you could see the text on them. It's still kind of hard to read, but as they go into the actual tiers themselves, it's probably going to get a little blurry. Sorry about that. But Iron Maiden. So this is where I'm having trouble. This is a problem. It's a problem because it's not a brilliant or a great song, but it's fucking iconic. To me, the quality is in good. Yeah. And. But. It's the, it's the it's, most iconic. It's the theme song. It's when Eddie comes out. They have like, never not played this or, song. Exactly. So that's where I said I'm going to have some trouble and that iconic is the only one that's not going to be fully opinion based because it's just, it's right. undeniable. It has to go in iconic. That it has to go in iconic. Okay. So that's a little hard to read. I was trying to be cute and like, oh, I'll just put, do like color coded themes for all the albums. And the red is like really hard to read <laughs> on uh, Killers, but... I am doing both Eyes of March and Wrathchild together because it's kind of, you okay, know, I it's see. kind of the same sort of thing, so. Well, Wrathchild, is it overplayed? Maybe. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, I think it would be good. Me too. And it's not because it's bad. Like, yeah. I mean, look, look at the list. There's barely any bad spots to take. Yeah. Uh, but I think good is fair for yeah, Wrathchild. I do too. That's what I was thinking. So we'll stick him right in there. 
All right, murders in a room org. Okay. To me, that's probably next to Killers is the best song yeah. on the album. So, and I don't think Maiden's reached their peak greatness yet. So I'm gonna say great. I was gonna say great too. I was thinking, oh God, he's gonna say brilliant. <laughs> But I love that song, but uh, I don't think it's a brilliant in terms of like it doesn't stand up things like Phantom. As we no, it's there. like they've already done Phantom yeah. and it's better. Yeah. So great, Genghis Khan. Oh, I love that one. I do too. It's so unique and so Steve. Personally, I think it's another great. I would act. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. I would actually say this one's brilliant. But you said that Rumor was second best to Killers, and we put that in great. I forgot the Genghis Khan on this <laughs> album. I'm, look, you get the final decision. I think it's brilliant, but you can go with yeah, great. You know, I guess we can put it up there with Transylvania, which they're both instrumentals, and they're both brilliant. They're, they're brilliant. Let's do it, Mike. All right. <laughs> Cheers. Let's do it. Cheers. Purgatory. This is my favorite on Killers. Really? Or I've always loved Purgatory. It is it's <laughs> a great song, and I would put it in Brilliant, but what would you put it in? I would put it in, well, it's like you have to compare it to their whole discography. So That's I would, true. That's I would true. actually put it between good and great. We'll put it in great because now that you say the whole discography, like it's not going to stand up to some of the others that I want to put in. No. Brilliant, and I think so. a lot more than we realize is going to be in Brilliant. Uh, yeah, which is why I'm trying to save some room. <laughs> Moving on to Number of the Beast. Okay, we've got Children of the Damned. Okay, I'm going to say, you know, looking at that album, I think that is right in the middle of how how the highs and lows of that album. Yeah. So I would say it's great. Yeah. Me too. Okay. So far, we've been agreeable. We'll see how long this lasts. <laughs> And uh, Number of the Beast. Iconic. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely iconic. It's not my favorite off the album, but it's undeniably iconic, so that is going in there. Front of the Hills. This is a weird one for me, mm -hmm. because I was thinking about this song earlier, and I thought, I, I think Maiden would still be where they are today if that song was never written, mm -hmm. uh, even though it was a big song for them. But as far as the quality of a song compared to other songs, I would actually just put it in good. I'd say at least great. I love Run of the Hills. That was the second Maiden song I ever heard. So, yeah. you know, holds a special spot for me. I mean, there, there's an argument for Iconic. I know there is. But, shit, I don't know. Should it be Iconic? <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is I know the next song is going in Iconic. That's true. And I just don't think it stands up. You're right. Let's, so let's put it in great. Let's just yeah. Because I know a lot of people also think that this one's overplayed live. I haven't seen enough tours to have it overplayed, but I still enjoy it. But yeah, that would be the name, as we just said, iconic. There's no doubt about it. All right, next album, Where Eagles Dare. Oh man, I mean, straight up brilliant. Yeah. It's not, it's not a song where everyone's like, Iron Maiden, Where Eagles Dare, but it's honestly one of the best songs they have. Okay. The Trooper. Iconic. Yeah. Easy. First song I ever heard from them. Me too. It got me invested. Many of you too, I'm sure. <laughs> Quest for Fire. Oh, okay. We're going all the way. Is it skippable or is it... Ugh. I mean, a lot of people are going to say that this album's perfect and this, that it's brilliant. Genuinely, Peace of Mind is one of my favorite Iron Maiden albums. And the problem with Peace of Mind is it's so heavily front-loaded that when it gets towards the end, it's a little shaky in comparison. Except the very end. Except the very end. <laughs> but okay, Quest for Quest for Fire for me, skippable. Okay, I agree. I was going to say. That. Our first skippable. We haven't reached the cringe phase yet. To Tame oh. a Land. Oh, that's such a good song. Brilliant for me. What is it for you? So, like, I feel like with all the Doom stuff going on and everything, it's like people are kind of looking at this song again. Uh, but being the end of the album epic that comes to be, you know, classic yeah. for this era, I think it's great just to compare it to the albums that are to come next. Well, 
Oh, I'm still putting it in Brilliant because it's like my favorite song on that album. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Captain Harris rules. All right, Ace is high. Ooh. That's a tough one. To me, it's like, is it iconic? Well, or... we know we have another iconic song on this album. And does it hold up okay. to the the level of iconic that that is? I mean, I think Ace is High is like probably a bit more well known and listened to than Mariner. But, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in Brilliant. Yeah, I think that's fair. Too. I think it's probably the greatest live metal opening song ever written. Yeah. Lost for words. Man, we're going all the way. Of course, Steve writes all the instrumentals. <laughs> um. I don't think that that one stands up to the ones on the first two albums. No, so I it would doesn't. just say good. It, it's probably. But we put the first two in brilliant. Right. Uh, no, I mean, looking at uh, on Power Slave, right. I think it's one of the weakest songs on you're Power right. Slave. Right, it can go in good. Even we need a little it's... more space up here, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need we need some stinkers. All right, the Duelists. This is a problem for me because that it's my favorite song. Yeah. On Power Slave. Really. Yeah. More than Ace is High? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I had no yeah. idea. You learn something new about people every that, day. That instrumental section in the in the middle is brilliant. And they... Oh, it's brilliant. Uh, but it's brilliant. It, uh, <laughs> they can't play it live because yeah. there's so many guitar tracks. But mm -hmm. to me, brilliant. To me, it's great. It's not my favorite on the album. But I think it deserves great. I can live with great. Okay. But it is brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> I was trying to, like, come up with a, a Steve word for each each one of these, but I can only think of brilliant and outrageous, but I didn't want to copy our good friend Middle Pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that Skippable could be outrageous. We need to come up with our own. Yeah. <laughs> Mike? <laughs> Anyways, Mariner, as we said, iconic. Absolutely iconic. iconic. I mean, how could it not that be That is the Steve Harris epic of all the Steve Harris mm -hmm. epics, in I my mean, opinion. I think it's the best piece of music that band's ever made. All right. Caught somewhere in time. Mm-hmm. It has to be brilliant. Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. I know it's not iconic, but it is so much better than great. Heaven can wait. Why don't you chime in before I chime in? Okay. I think that this is a good. I think that it's it's one of the lowest ranked songs on that album for mm -hmm. me. So it's it's good in my opinion. Yeah, I could see good, which is you a know shame. when I'm listening to it on album, it's good. You know, live when Bruce has the guns and stuff like that. You know, shooting at Eddie, I think it could be a great. But I'm genuinely just basing this off of yeah. how I feel when I'm listening to it on the album. Generally, like I think it's a great song, great live song, absolutely. But I think it might be a lower point of that album and yeah. era, so I'm fine with good. Okay. <sighs> oh, loneliness is on here. Yes. He wrote some great songs. Oh this is a God. Steve Harris Appreciation Day. I mean, to me, that's brilliant loneliness. I can agree with that. It's just phenomenal all the way through. Alexander. It's not iconic. Really? No. Are you kidding me? I don't think I think it's iconic to like hardcore maiden fans, but I don't think people But that's what matters. This is the only people that matter. <laughs> you said Ace is High was more well known than Mariner, and we put Mariner in Iconic and Ace is High in Brilliant. It is, it is more well known, but I still think that Mariner <laughs> is like, you just, you just can't have a conversation about Maiden without talking about Mariner. I personally think that Alexander is Iconic, and I would like if all of you would comment down in the description, what do you think? Is it Iconic or does it rank lower than My that? problem with putting it in Iconic is it's like, the classic Maiden era completely skipped over it. Like yeah, it didn't but, exist. But they made such a big deal that they never played it. And then it was such a massive deal that they did play it on this past tour. Yes. And then Nico said, oh, we played it. And then nobody cared when we stopped. Nobody clapped. <laughs> well, I'm putting it in iconic okay. because this is my video. You just jumped. <laughs> you just jumped I in. have no right to be here. All right, Alexander is iconic in my opinion. I am very genuinely curious to know what you all would think about that decision. All right, moving on. Infinite Dreams. Oh, Seventh Son has reared its head. I had some previous thoughts about this song, and as much as I want to say it's iconic... It's, it's not. It's not, and it's because 
it's iconic on Seventh Son. Like yeah. Seventh Son wouldn't be as good without this song. But to me, it's brilliant. It's it's mm-hmm. probably the best song yeah. on the album. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. I say brilliant. Wow. So, wow. What? I mean, this wow. is, I think this is a bigger era than Somewhere in Time was for them. And Seventh Son goes in brilliant to you, but Alexander is iconic. I'm saying Alexander is iconic because there was such a big stink about them never having played it. And people over the years have just been, play Alexander, play Alexander, play Alexander. They finally did it. And it was like, oh my God, everybody was so excited. You know, Seventh Son, they played it. It's a brilliant, amazing song on the album. But I feel like, you know... The, the general fan, I know this isn't for the general fan, but the, I feel like the general fan, when in when they did Made in England again, everyone was like, hell yeah, they're doing Seventh Son. But I feel like a lot of fans now, when they play Alexander, they're like, what's this song? I don't remember this from the 80s. Look, we have the likes of Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast, Hallowed Be the Name, The Trooper. Do you think that Seventh Son holds up to the same level as that? Well, those ones you just listed are not the same as Mariner and Alexander. If, you, if you're going to have Mariner and Alexander, I feel like you have to have Seventh Son up there, too. Fine. We're spending too much damn time on this song. <laughs> I'm trying to make this not a very long video. Hands are tied on that. The Clairvoyant. Good. Good. Good, <laughs> good, good. Good. I won't skip it. It's not my favorite on the album. Okay. Fun, fun time. Let's fill the bottom. Oh, well, I do genuinely like some of these songs down here. So this first one I do enjoy is the title track from No Prayer for the Dying. I think it's one of the best on the album. Yeah, but I would still say But to me, the good. whole the whole album's capable. So. I would say good for No Prayer for the Dying. Fair. The Assassin. Oh, I had to listen mm. to a couple of these songs uh, yesterday just because I was like, it had been a long time because, you know, some of these are skippable. I don't ever listen to them. And uh, yeah, the assassin is definitely going to be a uh, Skip, for me. skippable for me. You're in skippable. Yeah, it's 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 not that great. It's not that good. Okay. It's less than good. All right. Quest for fire has a little friend. Oh, good. All right. Mother Russia. Ah, uh, Mother Russia. I think it's good. Good. <laughs> All right. One of my favorites from here to eternity. I won't even have an opinion on this one. <laughs> Great. I love that song. I thought you put it higher. Well, I don't think it's brilliant. I think it's a great song, but it doesn't deserve to be up there with Phantom of the Opera, Loneliness and Long Distance Runner. It's like, it's comfortably with Prowler and Murders in a Room Org. It's better than the Clairvoyant? Look, it's based, <laughs> I, it's based off the other songs on the album. How it makes you feel yeah. when you listen to the yeah. album. Yeah, so okay. like, when I think, when I think, Oh, I'm listening to Fear of the Dark from Here to Eternity. That's a great song on that album. It is. It I'm, sticks out. You know, I'm comparing some to others, but it's just like my genuine like first thought upon listening to it. It's like, I'm listening to Seventh Son. Oh, that's awesome. And then you listen to Clairvoyant. That's not quite as good. Okay. Afraid to Shoot Strangers. This is tough. Ugh. It's it's a high point on the album, it is. but I still think it's good. I do too. I do love that song. I love being able to hear it live. Okay, Childhood's End. This is one I had to listen to again. I I, I knew the beep, 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 Yes. But I like was still kind of like fuzzy on the rest of the song. <laughs> um, it's To me, that song is better than I remember. Uh, but it's skippable. It's me. skippable, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we have arguably one of the most iconic of them all, Fear of the Dark. Iconic. Iconic. Everybody seems to just love that song. And okay. now the Blaze Bailey years. Bruce has left. Nobody cares anymore. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Sign of the Cross. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Judgment of Heaven. So there was, uh, I forget what the other song was that he wrote that I knocked off of this because there was uh, five on this one. But I left Judgment of Heaven on for a good friend, Logan, who's always <laughs> singing that song in all our videos. So... Are you um, familiar with this one? Absolutely, I am. Okay. And to me, this is the first. Uh, I don't think it's that bad. Waiting for me. The chorus and everything kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah. But 
the guitar parts and, you know, the solos. I, I do enjoy, but I would be nice and put it in skippable. What's going to go in meh? You know. Yeah. Because <laughs> if I'm... I can't put this below Quest for Fire and the Assassin, because I would much, much rather listen to Judgment of Heaven than those two. Okay. Poor peace of mind. What do you mean, poor peace of mind? It's one song. Blood on the World's Hands. Great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great song. I've always loved that one. I'd love to hear Bruce sing that one. Oh, don't get me started. Blood on the World's Hands. All right. Do you feel lucky or do you feel scared? No, meh. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> that is our first. Take it down to the bottom. Cat no like banana. All right, the Clansman. And we have to base it off album version because I did that the Heaven Can Wait. So I don't really like the album version. No. I would say good. Yeah. And good because it's still a good song. It is a good song, so put it in good. <laughs> <laughs> on the album, I tend to go for the live version. It just sounds so flat on the album. The Educated Fool has arguably one of my least favorite lines in any Maiden song. And what would that be? Open the page to chapter, chapter one. one. Come on, guys. Throw that down at the bottom. Yeah, it's, a, it's another one of those for me, unfortunately. And don't look to the eyes of the stranger. I was looking at that like, what is that? Yeah, <laughs> I had to abbreviate quite a few of these. Steve likes his long song titles. Don't look to go to the bottom. Don't look to. It's skippable for me because it's not as bad as those other two. It's not as bad as the Angel and the Gambler, and it's not as bad as. It's I know. So long. I know. Some people genuinely like the Angel and the Gambler too, and it does get it does get a lot of hate. But I genuinely don't like it. Okay, now we're moving on to the band has reunited. Oh, thank God. Steve's only writing one song per album on his own. Which is very strange. Yes. So, Let's Blood go. Brothers. Oh. That's the only song he wrote? I know. Wow. It is. Um, I would on put his own. that... I would put that in great. Yeah. It's not my favorite, but it's... No, like, but it's so just the when only they Steve put, one. Yeah. It's so good. No More Lies. Oh. Brilliant for me. I assume it's for you too. Yes. It's actually currently my favorite song on the album. I thought you were going to say ever. I'm like, damn. No, not ever. <laughs> it's just so much fun, so much oh, energy. I know. I want to hear that live so bad. No More Live. Brilliant. For the greater good of God. Brilliant. Yeah. See, these are easy. Yeah. These are lining up oh. nicely. When the wild wind blows. Oh, Steve, you're hitting us so bad in the in the two thousands. Um, I think this is a great song, but does it hold up to the last two that we put in Brilliant? I mean, I kind of think it does, mm -hmm. but there's also a reason to say like, is it a bit too long? You know. Mm -hmm. Are the parts good enough to continue the song for so long? To me, it's brilliant, but I think it, it belongs in great. Yeah, I was thinking that too. because It's one of, you know, love that song. I listen to it all the time. It's still great. I just don't know that it, it holds up to the other ones. All right, so now we're at Book of Souls. The Red and the Black. Okay. I loved seeing this on Book of Souls, but... To me, it has kind of waned over the years. Like, I definitely don't really go back and listen mm -hmm. to it. So to me, as far as looking at their career, I would actually just put it in good. I personally have it as a great because it's one of my favorite songs. It's that and um, Book of Souls on that album are my two favorite songs. I would put Book of Souls in great. Uh, but... but Yannick had his little fingers in that one. Mm -hmm, there was a Wiggly <laughs> Wiggly in there. So I'll, I'll I'm putting it. it. I'm putting it in great. You doesn't matter if you allow it. This is my, I'm still going my tier list. Okay, so now we've come to the last album that they've The final done, album. And that's recorded. when Steve's like, I'm writing a bunch of songs again. It's 2020 now, so Steve's hands are going in everything. Lost in a Lost World. Skippable. Skippable. Skippable for me. I liked it, you know, my first month with the album, but I haven't gone back to it, so. The thing I is, it's like modern, modern Steve is like, there's a great song in here, but there's yeah. going to be a bunch of other stuff, too. Death 
of the Celts. Totally, completely at the bottom. For us. For you and for, for me. me. <laughs> yeah. The Parchment? I'm putting that baby right in Brilliant. You know that's my favorite song on the album. Okay. I would say great, but... I know you would, but this is this is for you and for me. <laughs> well, it's for you, it's not for me. <laughs> but hey, you know, Steve's hitting us throughout his career with great stuff yeah. all the way through. Okay. Hell on Earth. Brilliant. Yeah. All right, I'm glad I got an agreement. Well, what am I going to say? Hell on Earth is great? Like, no, it's obviously... Well, I know you like Parchment more than I like Earth. Parchment more, but that doesn't make it any less brilliant, you know? So, so it looks like he got brilliance like through the entire career. Just skip uh, Brave New World. I mean, we even got an X Factor brilliant. Yes, I so. mean, incredible. So there's like like we said at the beginning, tons of brilliance. Yeah, uh, a good handful of iconics. So I feel like there's too many songs here to do the normal thing where you you know do best to worst after getting them all in there. But I feel like we could do it for the iconic in the bottom. You want to yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. rank the best. Should we in the start worst? at the bottom? Yeah. So, um, I think death of the Cows. no death of the no, I, no, no. I will say educated fool is my least favorite. Like maiden song of all time, or just Steve's of, song of this list. Right. Of this list, I don't know what my least favorite of all time would be. That's kind of difficult. Um, then I'd say death of the Celts. Then the Angel and the Gambler, because I, you know, genuinely, like, I've got some Stockholm Syndrome with that, where if it's playing, I find myself like, don't you think? It's like, I, I still bop around It's funny. It, but it's still just like, you know. So, there's our bottom three, and now our top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Iron Maiden is obviously... No. Oh, I thought you were going to keep it at the front, because it's always played. And it's the name of the Okay, band. so this is based off our opinion now. Okay, good. So it's just what we like the best. So we've got the iconic one. Now we're just going to base it off of our opinion of the iconic one. So Iron Maiden is at the bottom of the iconic for me. For you and for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm fine with it being at the bottom. Okay, it's so definitely got, the worst song of these. We, I'll pull these down here just so we can see them better. Yeah, let's have a little look see. Seven Sun, Alexander, Mariner, Trooper. Trooper would be like the most iconic. That would be like at the front. And then Iron Maiden, I think, after that. Well, I don't know. To me, I would put Hallowed as the first. I, um, no, I'm not saying for us. I'm just saying if we were doing this based on how like oh, okay. culturally iconic they are, Trooper would yeah. be number one. But, okay, second, second to last... What would you say? Fear the Dark for us? Um, or you one for me? This is just our opinions. Yeah, so our, our like, top... Eight. Our top eight <laughs> Steve songs. Yeah. Uh, well, number seven for me would be... Mm. It's Fear of the Dark for me. Okay. Why don't we just, you just pick yours and I'll just make some comments. And then you'll be super judgy about it. Yeah. So we got Fear of the Dark. And then I'm going to put The Trooper. Number of the Beast. Ah, uh, this is tough. <laughs> Those four. Yeah. It is ridiculous. I mean. Alexander. I would say Hallowed is the most iconic, Movie. probably best song ever, Movie. but. I mean, I think from here we go three, Seventh Son, two, Mariner. We? You told me to do mine. Yeah, you do yours, but I'm just saying what I would so do. Seventh Son would go here. Oh, look. Uh, yeah, that's tough. Mariner, second, Hallowed first, for sure. Excellent choice. What would you change of that lineup for the iconic row? First three are fine. Yeah, I like Alexander. I would probably switch Trooper with Number of the Beast. Mm -hmm. And I'd be happy with that. All right, that's it. The definitive Captain Harris tier list of most of the Steve Harris pen songs. I'll, catalog I'll, of Steve. I'll put the ones in the description that we didn't add. And I just felt like, you know, there was just so many songs on here anyway. I didn't want to spend too much time doing this video. So I know The Fugitive was one of them. 
I am the fugitive. Right, did not enjoy that song upon having a, a fresh <laughs> listen to it, so I picked uh, Childhood's End instead. But yeah, there's just a few that I left off, just like, you know, I think Strange World was one of them. But yeah, so let me know down in the comments what you would have changed mm-hmm. and what enraged you to see me put in Brilliant or Skippable. I guarantee almost every song got somebody gasping. I know. But anyway, happy <laughs> I do birthday the same thing. Yeah, happy, to Steve. Happy birthday, Steve. 68 years young, still rocking and rolling. Uh, you know, love him. Love Steve Harris, the namesake of this channel, Captain Harris. So, All right. anyways, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. See you.